Hey there guys, I'm Andrew Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. Welcome to the sixth video of the MTCNA playlist where we will be looking at the Microtik or Router S terminal. What makes it so cool? How can you access the terminal? How can you effectively use the terminal to navigate through the Microtik in order to view configuration or change configuration? This is the video for you. So let's get into it now. So in the previous video, I mentioned that you can access the Microtix terminal window either through three, probably four, but three-ish primary methods. One being via a terminal client like PuTTY or SecureCRT, where you can either use a console connection to connect, which is a special type of cable, but not all devices have these console ports. They are more or less reserved for some of the switches or bigger routers. It's not necessarily something you might see on a app or anything. So for other devices, and I'd say this is the primary method of people accessing devices on the command line, is via a Telnet or SSH session. Now, I, I wouldn't really recommend Telnet since it is unsecure and you can disable that and we'll cover that in an upcoming video, but SSH is definitely a great way to access the device. The only thing that you need to connect via SSH is the IP address of the device and the appropriate port number, but it is usually port 22 for SSH connections. And there is a third method that typically gets used, namely via Winbox itself. If you're not aware, if you're inside of Winbox, let me just quickly open it up. And it's the same way on both the new and old version of Winbox. There is a new terminal button that you can just click on and it will open up a terminal window. And this terminal will work like any other terminal clients. You'll have the same type of access. You can type your commands in. This is more or less just a preference type of thing. So if you want to use the terminal exclusively in order to manage your Microtik devices and you don't really want to get too much into Winbox, the option is there. The Microtik CLI might actually be even more powerful than Winbox itself because if you're not aware, some of the more newer features usually gets baked into the kernel, into the CLI, where you can access it from the terminal like ISIS as an example. So if I go routing ISIS, it exists inside of this context within the terminal. But if I look at the routing menu inside of Winbox, I won't find ISIS here, which is actually quite interesting. Now, I primarily tend to use just plain PuTTY if I am accessing any devices. I know it's boring maybe, but it is my tried and true method. It's pretty straightforward. So the only thing that we really need is the IP address of our Microtik. Now, I know since I'm using the default configuration for this Microtik, it does have the IP address of 192.168.88.1. If you've changed the IP address, you just need to update it to whatever IP address you are using. And it is worth noting, you can also connect to any remote Microtix using their management IP addresses or their reachable IP addresses, as long as it is routable, as long as it can actually get to that Microtik on the far end, you can connect to it via IP address as well. Now let's access our local Microtik using the IP and the serial port or the connection port for SSH is by default 22. However, you can update that on the Microtik, but we'll cover that in an upcoming administration video. So let's open up our session and then we're greeted with this prompt. Now we can log on to the command line using our login credentials. In my case, it is admin and whatever password is set for the admin account, which apparently I'm typing in incorrectly. And it's actually a good thing that I typed it in incorrectly because now you can actually see something very interesting if I just maximize it here. For any critical events that is picked up by the Microtik, be it an incorrect login or even something like a power outage, it will actually log that and also display it for any administrator that just logs into the device. So now I can see, hey, there was some system error critical event, login failure for the admin user from, and then gives me an IP address and it said it tried to connect via SSH. This is very interesting and useful because if our Microtik was maybe exposed to the outside and someone was maliciously trying to access our device with a bunch of login incorrects, we would be able to see their IPs, potentially block it, make sure we've got our account secured and all that wonderful stuff. But it is nice that the Microtik prompts us with this information when we log in so we know something has happened. We also get a bit of a login banner, which is customizable actually. There is a file or a section on the Microtik that you can basically set. It's similar to a message of the day almost where you can just update this to something custom if you'd like, just to tell people no unauthorized access to this device, you know, etc. The, the, the normal thing that you might see on devices that gets configured. And now one of the best parts for me is this press F1 for help. 
Now we will dive a bit more into the F1 in a second. I just first want to talk about a few additional things when it comes to the command line that you should be aware of. So there are two very important things that I want to state when it comes to the marketing terminal. The first being is that there is no configuration mode that you need to enter in order to make any changes to the marketing. It's all done from one single panel. And the second thing is that this follows a hierarchy. So the marketing, the moment you log in, you're basically set at that top level, and then you can drill down into other places of the hierarchy where you can go into like IP settings or the routing settings. Think about it exactly as is as if you were in Winbox and you're clicking on those options or menus, like you click on IP, it's the same thing from the command line's perspective. So I could do something like type IP, and it would actually color code this as this bluishy cyan -y color. And if I hit enter, it'll actually change me into that IP address hierarchy, into that IP address menu. Now, inside of this menu itself, I could actually do a few things to figure out any additional commands that I might be able to run inside of it. The first big clue is you can actually press F1 at any time to receive some further instructions or help or guidance from the Microtech to see what you can do from here. So if I press F1, it will quickly show me all of these objects or commands that I can run. And if you see this bluish or cyan color, this is just basically additional sub menus that you can go into. So you can drill down lower into this hierarchy where you can find additional things to configure. And if you see a purple or magenta type of color coded thing, then this actually means this is a command that you're issuing to the Microtech. So here I could export some configuration and if I drill down any further into another menu in here, maybe I could edit or add or remove configuration. There's so many different things that you can do, but it's worth understanding what these color codes mean as well. So let's maybe drill down a bit further into the hierarchy by going into the address field. And if I hit enter, I'm now inside the IP address space. And what I could do again is press F1 and it will give me a list of all of the different options that I have from this menu. And here I can see I can add a new IP address perhaps, or I can set a comment, or I can disable something, or I can enable things, or I can just do something like a basic print command. So if I run the print command, it will do exactly as on Winbox. If you go to IP and address, it pops up that box to show you all of the information. It kind of does that. It's popped up this information on the screen on the terminal to show us what IP addresses has been configured on this Microtech. Now this is just a nice little way that you can navigate through the command line itself with the help of F1. But there's something else that helps you with your process a little bit, namely context aware help. Now besides pressing F1, you can also press the tab key to get hints of commands that you can run potentially or to auto complete commands. So what I could do is I could maybe say I wanted to add another IP address to this Microtech. I could type in add. And if I press tab from here, it will actually give me possible things that I can run next inside of this configuration line. So I could maybe say I want to add a new address. So I could type address and then it will, if I hit tab again, it gives me that equal sign. And in Microtech, you'll see a lot of equal signs for anything that you're configuring. But here we can set what the IP address will be. So I can maybe set this as 1111 slash 32. I can spacebar this, hit tab, equals, and then with the interface, I could set this to my allo interface, which is a loopback interface. And if I press tab, what else can I fill in here? Maybe the network. And the network is just going to be the same address, 1111. And if I hit enter, this will actually now just add this to the Microtech. Besides giving us the possible things that we can do when we hit tab, it's also quickly auto-completing any command. So if I type AD and I press tab, it just fills it in automatically for us, which is such a nice little time saver that we have. Great, so now we can see how we can add IP addresses and such. How do we get back in the hierarchy? So if I wanted to just go back up one level, I could actually press just two dots, hit enter, and that just takes you back one space in the hierarchy. If you wanna to go to the very top from any level, you can just hit the forward key and then hit enter, and that takes you back to the root or the top of the hierarchy where you can now navigate back to any other configuration menu items 
that you want to. Now here's where it also gets awesome with Microtik. You don't specifically need to go into every hierarchy thing to configure things. You could actually just type them out as if you were in that hierarchy. So I could do something like type IP, tab address, tab, add, and let's add a new IP address. And I'm just pressing the tab key as I'm adding. So maybe 2.2.2, .2. sorry, let's press tab to see what we need to fill in. So address equals 2.2.2.2 slash .2 .2 .2 32. Interface equals, let's make this the loopback address again. And then I can set my network to 2.2.2.2 .2 and I can hit enter. And here I've run commands inside of the IP address hierarchy or directory and I've added 2.2.2.2 slash .2 .2 .2 32 on the microtech. I can now also do IP address print without going into the hierarchy, hit enter and there we can see exactly what IP addresses has been configured in the device. So this is just how you can navigate around the hierarchy which is really useful especially when you just start out. Now what else can we do inside of the hierarchy? Well if I press F1 and I press it again we can see there is a general console usage help. And this is actually more information on the Microtech because here you can see if you press F1, it gives us a list of all of the useful commands. And here we can see if we press tab, it actually gives us this context aware help that we are able to quickly do things with. But there's a ton of extra additional nice little shortcut keys that you can use inside of the Microtech in order to make your life a lot easier. Now this is where I want to talk about the different modes that you can enter inside of the terminal because by default you enter what they just call the normal operation mode which is just what we see in front of us now. We're on the terminal, we can do everything that we want to do. But let's say maybe we wanted to access the safe mode of the Microtech so that if we were going to make some sensitive changes and we did potentially get knocked off of our session that didn't save those changes or it didn't break the network or it could revert back, how can we enter safe mode from the command line? And this is where we can also see we can actually press F4 or Control dash X in order to enter safe mode as well. So if I press F4, it will actually note that safe mode has been taken and it will put the safe mode brackets right next to your arrow key as well or where the arrow key used to be. So now you know you are in safe mode. So you can now add commands as you see fit on the Microtech and it will only save the changes once you press F4 again in order to leave safe mode. So that is actually quite useful. And another mode that's actually confused me before, because sometimes I accidentally press stuff like control X, is there is a, I think they call it the hot lock mode, but I'm gonna call it the, the sonic mode, the super fast mode. And what that actually means is if when I press F7, you'll see I get another yellow arrow next to my previous arrow. And this kind of just turns on that context sensitive help by default. So the moment you start typing in commands, it will just fill it in automatically with what it thinks the next or what the possible result should be. So if I type IP, it just adds that. But let's say if I type A, D, it fills in address for me immediately. I don't need to hit the tab key or anything like that. So let's say I want to add an address. And here I come with the issue that I sometimes have with this sonic mode. I've typed add because I know I want to add something. But as I type the D, it's already adding the next thing for me where I might just want it to add an address and then, then I can type my address in after the equals. So that is kind of where this hot lock mode can be used for to speed up the configuration process, but you can also potentially get yourself like in weird situations. So I do say that you, you should maybe use that with some care in my opinion. Now there are awesome other a few little bits and bobs that you can do uh, with some of the shortcut keys you can press like control a to go to the start of the line or control e to go back to the end of the line there, there's so many useful little tweaks and such that we can do but it's nice that you can see a list of all of the potential stuff that you can configure using f1 or if you double press f1 to see a list of the shortcut keys now let me just head out of hot lock mode because now I want to talk about the last bit of information that you should be aware of when it comes to the Microtech CLI, and that is the command history. And what do I mean by that? Well, as an administrator, you can actually see the previous changes that has been issued on the Microtech. If you press the up arrow key, it will actually show what command was issued previously. And you can navigate through this command line history by just 
pressing the up arrow key the whole time and then you can see exactly what was done on the microtech and if you want to go back down to your previous state you can just press down 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 until you get back to just a blank window now this is very useful if you want to maybe troubleshoot some potential issue or you just want to see in general what happened to the microtech what thought process another administrator might have had when they configured something so that you don't potentially mess something up. That is extremely, extremely useful. So one more cool thing that you might not know about the Microtech terminal is you can literally run all commands typically that's on Winbox and maybe even more. But one big thing that I want to showcase is that you could still use stuff like Mac Talnet even from the command line. You don't need Winbox to connect to a Microtech over its layer two IP address exclusively. Two Microtechs are more than capable to connect over layer two to each other. This is actually what makes that whole Roman theme works that we're going to be discussing in an upcoming video. But let me just kind of show you what that command looks like. You'll just type in the tool. And if I tab this, I can maybe go for the Mac-Telnet. And then I can just tab this. It will ask me what's the host address I want to Mac-Telnet to. And this is where you can put in a MAC address. So maybe like AABBCC112233. And if I hit enter, it will ask you for the login credentials of the remote Microtech. You can fill that in. Even though I don't have anything actually connected right now, this is just an example. But you could connect to a remote Microtech using its MAC address. And it's really, really, really helpful. Anyways, this is where I'm going to be ending off the video. I hope you've learned a couple of things regarding the Microtech CLI. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in another video. See ya. Bye.